Welcome, everybody. Welcome back to our playlist worship series. It is an honor to share God's word with you and to worship God with you. I want to start with a confession. When uh, my wife Ann and I were putting the finishing touches on our uh, physically distanced, masked Christmas gathering with our, our quarantine, my kids and grandkids that we've been uh, safely gathering with these many months, uh, it dawned on me as we were making the final preparations, I said to my wife, I forgot to get you a Christmas present. I'd like to say this is the first time this has happened, but true to form, my wife bailed me out. She said, no worries, you can just get us a legacy, bo legacy box. Uh, legacy box is a way to take old VHS tapes of family history. When we were in our first church in Dayton, Ohio, they gave us a, a, a video camera that was about the size of this. <laughs> and we proceeded to use that for many years to make tapes of our kids and our family and events and programs. And you know how that goes. And now we had dozens of videotapes, which we don't even have something we can play on anymore. And apparently with this legacy box, you send it in and they can convert all this to digital files. It can be edited and shared. And we have now done that. So this is going to be a lot of fun. You know, when you get to be um, our age, the, uh, the, the swiftness of life, how fast time goes by becomes ever more apparent. And when you have times where you can look back, and think about uh, the stages of life and can see the passage of time, the panorama of your life. At Atonement, we love to call this reflecting on and sharing our faith journey. That becomes more and more important. We, um, we continue our journey into playlist today with a song that does just exactly that. It's the most requested song, by the way, in this series, so thank you for your song requests. Uh, it is Borning Cry by John Ilvesacker, and I've asked Steve Joyle and Rachel Wagner to sing that song for us.
In one of the most striking images of a 2021 that we hope will be an improvement on 2020, a, uh, the, the, the descendant uh, pastor in the pulpit of historic Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta, Georgia, has been elected to the uh, U.S. Senate. It's quite striking in a, a year that has been uh, shattered by so much racial tension and in a year where we ask uh, for God to illuminate our lives together that uh, we now celebrate this week the birthday of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and uh, Raphael Warnock is installed into the U.S. Senate. Now this is not a, a sermon about politics, it's, a, it's about playlists, playlist songs of life that inter intersect scripture, but in a way it's also about politics, the politics of church music. Not a small number of my colleagues in ministry laughed when we saw this post from an interview with Raphael Warnock following his election. He was asked how his background as a pastor might inform his approach to uniting people in this divided time. It seemed to be a setup for a stirring sermon on the reconciling power of the blood of the Lamb. But instead, with a twinkle in his eye, Reverend Senator Warnock said, Listen, if you've ever had to get people who like anthems and folks who like contemporary gospel to work together, you can do anything. <laughs> Translation for us Lutherans, if you've ever had to get people who like traditional hymns and contemporary songs of worship to be the church together, you can do anything. Well, that's a bit of an exaggeration, but we know the tensions therein. You know, when John Elvisacker brought his guitar to church in the 1960s and started to sing, it was quite a shift. He was soundly criticized by many traditional Lutheran hymn writers who didn't much like seeing a guitar, let alone drums, in church. He was called the Bob Dylan of Lutheranism, and depending on what you thought of that other Minnesota songwriter from the 1960s, that was not necessarily a good thing. Yet it was the differences in John's music that made him extremely popular. John's music gets you into your heart. It gets you in touch with your heart, said his wife, Fern. John's music put the gospel into everyday life. So, you know, if you are a lover of traditional hymns, as I am, uh, that's a wonderful thing, but... I urge all of us not to denigrate those who like contemporary Christian music. And if you, are, on the other hand, are someone who likes popular music and contemporary Christian music more than you like traditional hymns, I urge you not to look down upon the music of your parents, grandparents, the, the centuries of sacred music that um, have been passed down to us from devoted followers of Christ. I... I urge people to become bilingual in worship, to, to develop appreciation for both, perhaps the traditional music and the way that it's able to accommodate intricate poetry and, and perhaps uh, contemporary music because it taps into the heart language of the next generation of faith-filled people. You know, I wrote this sermon in the, um, the bedroom that is now my office, where about uh, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, John Ilvesacker spent a couple of nights with us there in River West, Milwaukee. We'd invited him. I invited him to come to All People's Church and present a, a worship conference and to worship God with us. And I'll never forget, uh, there in our sanctuary that was being remodeled and built. We had a, a, a plywood platform for a chancel that was about uh, 10 feet by 12 feet. And, and John set up and, and led us in worship and taught us music as though he was worshiping God with princes and kings and queens. And of course, um, knowing that John knew exactly who he was worshiping, that's exactly how he regarded all of us there in the heart of the city of Milwaukee. It's, 
It's an important insight. Uh, whoever we are in, in our journey in life, whoever we, uh, whatever we've achieved, whatever status or title we may have, and especially important when we are sensing that the world is on top of us and wearing us down, that you and I are the child of a king. And uh, it was striking that day that um, as John packed up his huge panel truck, he, he was his own roadie. He packed all this equipment all by himself, and as he drove off, I noticed he'd intentionally left us a box of his Borning Cry songbook that you can see in this image. It, was, uh, it is the, the most used songbook that uh, contains a, sub- a selection of the more than 2,000 songs and hymns that he wrote for worship. Now, nearly all of John's songs were inspired by Scripture, some by the visits that he made around the world where he would pick up tunes and stories and music from diverse cultures and put them to music, just as uh, we know that Martin Luther did in his day of bringing him singing into the church, literally taking the tunes, the popular tunes, out of the saloons and bringing them into lyrics of worshiping God. We, uh, we see also in John's songs... Uh, Scripture. They are uh, immersed in Scripture. They exude Bible verses. And in Borning Cry, this hymn that is a panorama of our faith journey, we recognize these Bible verses. I encourage you to read them with me. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, Revelation 22:13. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever, Romans 11, 36. And from Acts 17, 28, for in him we live and move and have our being. John's music uh, speaks to the heart and puts the gospel into everyday life life, his wife Fern said, and, and we recognize uh, the events of our lives in the verses of Borning Cry. Where do you find glimpses of your faith journey in these verses as we see them lived out in our life together at atonement? I was there to hear your Borning Cry. I'll be there when you are old. I rejoiced the day you were baptized to see your life unfold. I was there when you were but a child with a faith to suit you well. In a blaze of light, you wandered off to find where demons dwell. When you heard the wonder of the word, I was there to cheer you on. You were raised to praise the living God to whom you now belong. If you find someone to share your time and you join your hearts as one, I'll be there to make your verses rhyme from dusk till setting sun. In the middle ages of your life, not too old, no longer young, I'll be there to guide you through the night. Complete what I've begun. And when the evening gently closes in and you shut your weary eyes, I'll be there as I have always been with just one more surprise. with just one more surprise. How many in this age of global suffering need just one more surprise and would be surprised to to discover that, that God is there, present in the events of their life, not only to hear their born in cry, but in their growing, in their relationships, in their growing old. 
How many of us today need to see our lives as a panorama of God's presence? You need to know that your life has meaning. It has purpose. And it is loved by God who is here for you now. How many of us need to know in the daily frustrations, which are so many, that that, um, that promise of one more surprise gives us a daily new life and then, and then for eternity just one more surprise. As I said, John wrote... Uh, seemingly countless songs for worship. Uh, there's one that hasn't entered our catalog of worship here at Atonement that I'm going to ask Steve and, us, and myself to try to do for us. It's uh, called Pass It On. You'll recognize in the lyrics the, um, the core values of our church, what we hold to be inviolable for us in, in, in what we hope pleases God living our lives of compassion and service for others, being God's hands and God's feet, passing God's love around. But you'll also recognize in these words when we celebrate being the body of Christ, God who is present and who is revealed in our lives, who comes to us disguised in the events of our lives as we share God's love together in our relationships, as we pass his love around in community and in holy communion. We, uh, we give thanks to God for the music of John Ilvesacker and uh, for the knowledge that God hears our burning cry now and forever. <laughs> 